All right, let me explain to you how VCV Rack is working. So I'm going to share, let me see how I can do this. I can do, I do that. Okay, guys, can you see my rack, my software rack? Yeah, okay, great. Right, so when, as I said, you need to set yourself up with an account with VCV Rack, but everything I'm showing you today is pretty much using the, the, the bog standard um, the core uh, modules. If you right click, then it will bring up the, the different modules. Now I've got quite a few different modules in here, but that's because I subscribe to the bcvrack.com uh, to, to different authors, and then I can download their, their, their modules. But if you click at the very bottom, it says VCV, and this, where are we, VCV. So these are the core modules that we're going to, we're going to be using. All right, so let me just bring up this here. Da, 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 da. Right, and I can explain to you. Right, so let's bring up a scope. This is what's brilliant about this. Right, so hopefully you can all see a scope. If I press the my wheel button on my mouse, I can go up and down. And if I press the control key, I can zoom, zoom in and out. Right. One of the most important um, modules within modular synthesis is a VCO, which is a voltage controlled oscillator. And that is going to um, make my sound. Okay, that's going to make my wave, my waveform, whatever I want. So if I plug, um, if I plug, for example, a sine wave here into my scope, I'm going to see it. All right, I can see the I can see the waveform. And the way I did that is I clicked with my left mouse button, and I want a sine wave, and I'm going to put it into the scope here. Okay. Now you can't hear anything yet, so I need to add in a an audio device. I'm going to add in audio 16 because getting all this working um, requires a bit more of a complex interface, but you can probably get by when you do this, you can probably get by with just an audio eight and then just use channels one and two. I'm going to use audio 16. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this block size down to 64. Otherwise it's going to go all crackly for you. And then I'm going to, let it think, and then I'm going to choose focus right, 16 in, 16 out. Okay, and if I take my sine wave from here and I go into five, hopefully, give me a nod, guys, or a thumbs up. You got that right, okay. And if I go into the other ear, I forgot you're on Zoom, so it's all going to be mono for you at the moment anyway, but that's fine, okay. Right, so I've got a little mixer here, so I hope you can control the volume. Is that a reasonable mix for my voice and the, the tone at the moment? I'm hearing what you're hearing, so it should be okay. Right, so I can change the frequency, which is obviously the pitch that I'm working at for this wave. Now, I'm just gonna kill this link and I'm gonna add in a mixer. Okay, and then I'm going to put my sine wave back into here. And I'm going to take my final mix out into here. Okay, now I can control the volume. If I take channel one and put it back into my oscilloscope, I've still got my frequency, but I can also change it here change the level. In fact, if I do this one here, that's better. All right. Okay, so you can see the amplitude changing there. Okay, it's all rather dull at the moment, but that's, that's, that's fine. So if I want to delete a, a patch cable, I can just press the right mouse button. And if I want to add one, I can, I can do that. Okay. If I wanted to add a 
another cable, I've just pressed the control key and then I can add a second cable in. I can move these patches around, as I said, um, and I can zoom in and out. And a nice little touch is if I press the control key, I can sort of push them all, push them all together. Okay, so far. Right. Um, within modular synthesis, it's very important the different sort of uh, the different sort of uh, sound waves that we're looking at. And what we're looking at here is a sine wave, and a sine wave is the purest of any sound wave. Okay, so if I, uh, we can we can make any sound with with the, with all the sound waves, and if I bring up, uh, where is it? Is it in this one maybe? If I look within the frequency domain, I should only see really fundamental. If I take this and come into here. I can see a few. Why should I? Why am I seeing a few? I should only see one. Um, it's because it's analog. That's why. So I put it back into into digital mode. That's the pure sound. Okay, that's my pure pure sine wave. And with analog, you're getting that sort of um, extra sort of characteristics, which is why we all love analog. That's why we get these unique sounds from analog. Now, if I if I put in a um, if I was to listen to, for example, a square wave. If I take this and just turn the volume down, okay, you can see we've got a lot more harmonic range here. And you can also see, I'll just turn the volume down a bit more and just zoom in a bit. Okay, you can see my square wave, my square wave up here at the top. If we look at a, uh, a triangle wave, we're really looking at a, a mixture of the sine wave and the square wave. Okay, it's a lot, uh, it's a lot less aggressive. And finally, if we listen to the the saw wave, it's sort of the the, the richest richest sound uh, of all. Um, so if we're doing things like subtractive subtractive synthesis where we might use um, filters to, to, to cut and chisel the sound. That's a nice wave to, to be working with. But for now, I'm just gonna go back to the sound, this, the sine wave because it's probably the nicest one for, for you guys at the moment. Okay, so we're, we're covering the basics here. We've got a voltage control oscillator. We've got it into a mixer and we're just viewing the wave here on our scope. So, yeah, so I've probably spent in real terms, I've probably spent about four or five hundred pounds here if I was if I was spending real money on on Euro rack. So that's what's so great about VCV. Now, this is all pretty useless at the moment because I've got no control over it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, my QWERTY keyboard as an input device. So if I right click and go back to VCV here, and if I go to MIDI to CV, and then if I left click that, I can go to computer keyboard, and then I'm gonna click QWERTY keyboard, and Eurorack uses one volt per octave. And I can control that. So if you look at my voltage control oscillator, it's got a voltage octave input here. The, the ones with black rectangles around them are outputs and the others are inputs. So if I put a voltage octave input here, if I press my QWERTY keyboard, okay, we can, we can go up through the scale. But the other thing that's happening here is I've still got this is just a continuous note. Now, we can send audio signals, which is what we're doing here with this, uh, with this patch here. But I can also send control voltages, pulses and gates. And a very important gate for us in, in modular synthesis is the, the, the gate of pushing down on the key and letting go of the key. So 
if I bring up another scope, let me just put this over here. Right, if I put my scope, if I put my gate into my scope, and if I press a key, you can see that, let's change the time. So I press now, you see it goes high and then it goes low. I'm hoping you guys can see this. Um, I've reduced the resolution of my monitor so that you can see it. Right, um, so let's use that. It's like a binary Boolean on off, right? So when, my, when it's off, it's at zero volts and now it goes up to five, right? So let's take this gate. I'm gonna press the control key because I need to put, if I, if I just press my left mouse button, it's gonna take it away. I'm gonna press the control key and I'm gonna go into the control voltage of my mixer. Now it's stopped. Now when I press the button, it plays. Yeah, so I'm just going across QWERTY at the top. That's great, that's, that's what we want. Okay, but it's still not ideal for, for, for musical purposes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change this back to Windows MIDI and I'm going to put in my Keylab Mark II keyboard. So I don't know if you guys can see, but if you guys can still see me, but I've got a keyboard, a MIDI keyboard down here. Um, so it doesn't, it can be any keyboard. You could have something like, I really recommend Arturia, Arturia stuff. This is a, a, a nice little keyboard. This is great because it's, this is, um, this has got the, this is called a key step and it's got uh, voltage control in and out or out for for gate and uh, pitch and other modulation but you can spend you can get a midi keyboard for you know 20 quid yeah you can get a new one for 20 quid you can get one on ebay for um the same price and, and, and a much better one um so we can use our keyboard now so hopefully if i press my keyboard there we go Let's just turn the volume up a little bit because it's a little bit quiet. Okay, so things to note, it still doesn't sound great, okay, because we just got a pure voltage control oscillator. We're not, we're not really playing or, or modifying the, the sound at all. So we can, we can add some filters and, and, um, uh, and something called an ADSR, which of course is, is absolutely fundamental to modular synthesis. So let's put a, um, let's have a look. So I've done the gates, I've done the pulses. Let's put a filter in and an ADSR. So I put a filter, filter, it's a voltage controlled filter here. So I'm just gonna drag that down. And I'm gonna take the input here. I'm gonna put a low pass filter back into here. So now if I push a key, I can modify the filter. So let's keep it nice and open. Um, but one of the real characteristics of modular synthesis is really working with ADSR envelopes. And I just wanna to talk to you a little bit um, about ADSR, because it's, it's very important. I'm sure a lot of you already know about ADSR, but I'm just going to, so you guys can see that. Right, so here we've got an envelope, and this in essence is gonna be a control voltage that we're gonna be um, sending. So this is zero volts, I'm going up to five volts, okay? ADSR. Okay, attack, decay, sustain, release. Attack is from the time. So this is time at the bottom, okay? And we've got amplitude. It doesn't have to be amplitude. It's actually voltage. And I can, I typically would apply this to amplitude, which is the volume, in order to give it a softer, a, a softer, more controlled tone. I can apply it to anything I want now. I could put it, I could apply an ADSR envelope to pitch if I wanted. Right, so, the attack is a number, 
it's, it's, it's how long is it going to take to go from no sound up to my maximum sound? Okay, that's my attack. Then my decay time, again, is time. And it's how long is it going to take to go down to the sustain level? Okay, so when we move on to sustain, sustain is not time, it's an amount that you that you sustain while you're holding the press or pressing the button or while the gate is open. And then when I let go of my button, that's where, when we're gonna release. And it's the release time, which is going to be, how long is it before we go from sustain level down to uh, zero volume? Right, okay. So let me come back into here and Bring VCV back up. Okay, make sure it's still working. If you find that VCV suddenly goes um, quiet on you, the best thing to do is to reconnect the audio card. Okay, so you just click on that and then reconnect it. Um, right, so let's add an ADSR because if you listen to this sound, it's on or off. Right? It's, there's no real richness to that. So what I'm going to do is bring this up here. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Just two seconds. Okay, so I'm going to bring in an ADSR. Right click, ADSR, ADSR. ADSR, there's ADSR. Okay, and bring it down here so you can see. So I've got my attack, decay, sustain, and release. Now, at the moment, the gate is coming from my left. By the way, can you guys see my cursor? I don't know if you can see my cursor in Zoom. I'm just over the scope on the left. You can, okay. Right, so the gate here is currently the control voltage to the mixer and it's either on or it's on full. So I'm gonna take that off. Notice as soon as I do that, the, um, there's nothing telling the sound to turn off. I'm gonna put that into gate here. And then I'm gonna take my output from my ADSR back into the control voltage. All right, now hopefully if I press a key, you see how it's softer? It sounds better. If I increase the release, now when I let go, it'll be softer moving away. You hear that? Okay, so we're starting to get something that's a bit more musical now. What I'd also like to do is show you on the scope the ADSR. Because if you remember back to that slide I just showed you earlier, you could you could see that the ADSR is triggered when I um, when I press my key down. So if I if you look at the scope on the left, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit more. Right. So what I can do is these oscilloscopes have got two inputs. So I should be able to take the output from my ADSR. Again, I need to press the control key. So I'm still putting in a secondary cable, and I'm gonna put that into here. And let's just zoom in on this scope here. So press a key and let go. That's a beautiful ADSR envelope you can see there, straight away, okay? And if I, um, I come down here, if I just zoom out and increase the attack time, you see how it takes longer to go up? If I make it nice and sharp, coming in, just wait for the scope to cycle. See, it comes in immediately. Okay. Right, so what have we looked at so far? We've looked at voltage controlled oscillators, VCOs, We've looked at VCFs and ADSR. We've got a basic mixer channel here, and we just used a, a, a scope to, to help us um, pull things together. Now, a lot of synthesizers are um, 
monophonic and this is monophonic and um, the the synthesizer that i have um, on my left is monophonic as well but what we can do and uh, this is a new um, function which has been um, as part as part of the new uh, vcv is i can make it polyphonic so if you right click on this i can then go down to well first of all i should show you that if i press multiple keys i just do a c triad it's only going to play the last note i've played so if i press five go down um key c add the d add the e i've still got all the other keys pressed but because it's monophonic i'm not going to hear them but this is this is this is great. So I just go to uh, polyphony, moly, uh, monophonic. So polyphony there, and I could just choose how many notes I want. So five is sufficient. Notice the cables have gone a lot thicker. That means that we've got polyphony working. So now if I do a chord, yeah, it's distorting slightly in my ears. I'm just gonna bring that down slightly. Yeah. Okay, so let me show you something else which you can do. So I've, I've now in essence got a MIDI keyboard that's using a um, modular synthesizer that you've built yourself from scratch. And if you were to use a real modular system. I can do exactly the same thing. I don't know if you guys can see my camera. I can build exactly the same thing here. I've got a voltage controlled oscillator into a filter, into a VCA, and I've got um, an envelope generator here. All right, the difference is that the, the VCV is, um, <laughs> is free. And it's great for us to is, is great for us to be it's great for us to be learning on. Okay, so you've also got on the MIDI to CV, you've also got other controls that we can use. PW is not nothing to do with pulse width modulation. PW is pitch wheel. So a lot of keyboards have got pitch wheels, even the even the cheaper ones. So on this one, it's just I can I can pitch wheel up on this up and down here. So if I add my pitch wheel here and I'm going to go into FM which stands for frequency modulation I'm going to have to increase this attenuator slightly but now if I press a note let me increase the volume slightly now if I just move my pitch wheel on my keyboard see how it's pitching it Okay, so we can do uh, we can we can pitch like that. So that's grand. That's grand. Right. Let's look at uh, a, a few more modules. Let's look at a um, sequencer. Let's add a sequencer into into the mix. Right. So we've done an ADSR. Let's add a sequencer. So I'm not going to use. I'm not going to use uh, this guy anymore, so let's delete that. And let's just zoom out a bit. And let's add in a sequencer. There's a sequencer here. Let's bring it down. Okay. I'm sure you all know, know about sequencers. In essence, I'm able to send a, uh, a pitch out, or a clock out, or um, velocity out, or gate out and uh, it's, it's, it's used a huge amount in, in, in synthesis and modular synthesis. So what I'm going to do is we're basically going, you see these numbers here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's basically going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it's sending out whatever these values are here. So if I, if I modify these, these are just pitches. I'm just putting, I'm, it doesn't have to be pitches, but I'm going to use it as a pitch. And I'm going to then send row one into my 
voltage per octave. Okay. And then I'm going to send the gate, which is basically um, trigger, 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 trigger. I'm going to send that gate into here. Okay, now we're just going through the sequencer, playing all these notes, which is random notes, and it's not, it's not very, not very musical. So let's let's try and make it a little bit more musical. Let's let's first of all turn that volume down because it's really annoying. Okay, so let's add in a quantizer. And what the quantizer is going to do is it's going to basically, these are all my semitones here, and I can basically force, um, I can force these pitches to be within this, within these ranges. Okay, so this up here is C, and then that would be C sharp. So let's just say we want to play in the key of C because it's nice and easy. So in essence, I just want to remove, so remove the D sharp, and then I'm going to want to remove an F sharp. A G sharp and an A sharp. Is that right? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So what I'm what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the pitch. Let me just bring the volume back up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this pitch that's coming out of row one, which is my volt per octave. I'm going to put it into my quantizer and I'm going to put my quantizer back to where it was before. Okay. Now we're in the key of C. So now if I just change this slightly, we're always going to be forced within that range. Okay, so we're starting to end up with something a little bit more, a little bit more musical now. All right, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is something called pulse width modulation. So I'm just going to turn this volume right down here. Everyone okay so far? Yeah, thumbs up, right, okay. Right, pulse width modulation. Again, a very important part of modular synthesis. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start from scratch again with a voltage controlled oscillator. Where's it? I'm just going to put it somewhere. There it is. Let's bring this down here so you can see. And I'm going to put a scope in so we can see what we're doing. And with the pulse width modulation, we're really looking at the square wave. Put it back to digital, clean it up a little bit and just zoom. Oh, 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 oh. Zoom right in. Okay, there's my there's my square wave that you can see. Um, now one thing I can do, there's two things I'm going to show you here actually. I'm going to show you pulse width modulation and low frequency oscillation. Now pulse width modulation, if I change this is my attenuator for my pulse width and if i move this you see how it's changing the wave there yeah can you see that do i need to zoom in a bit more it's changing that and that gives some very nice sort of sonic characteristics now i don't want to be doing that with my mouse on this control yeah so what i need to do is i want i want something else to do that for me and I need another oscillator. I need another oscillator. So let's bring up a LFO. So we've done VCO for voltage controlled oscillator. I want an LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator. And these are really for control voltages. We can't really hear these because they're so low frequency, but I can use these to control um, other parameters. So for example, I could use this to control the pulse width modulation here. So let's think about this, right? We know a sine wave is nice and smooth. So let's add a sine wave 
to PWM, which is pulse, pulse width modulation. And there we go. Yeah, it's doing it already. It's changing that sonic characteristic. And if I change this, yeah, it does it a lot smoother or slower rather. The way that I use is obviously going to change how the pulse width modulation happens. So if I put a square wave on, you think back to what a square wave looks like. It's either on or off. So if I put my square wave on, you see what it's doing? There's no smooth transition. So you get what you want with the sound. We get what we want with the sound. We can set that up how we want it. Let's, um, let me put this up here so you can even hear it because you can't hear it at the moment. Let's zoom out. Uh, in. Can you hear that? That's the pulse width modulation. Turn it off. That's off. That's on. Okay, so we can come back to our um, our mix up here. And if I wanted to make it a little bit more interesting, I could add a low frequency oscillator, LFO. And I could use a sine wave and I could go back into here. I could change this to a square wave. I could increase my pulse, my pulse width. And now you can see we're getting a very different sound. I can change the pulse width modulation with the, with the frequency here. Okay, we can also add um, other, other characteristics. So we could add, for example, a delay. Let's put a delay in here. So if I go to, um, what's the best way of doing this from the filter probably. If I right click here and look for delay, 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 there's a delay here. Let's put a delay there. That's coming into here. That's going into there. It's very easy to get lost in modular. And right, now I've got a delay, so now I can start to change the delay time. The mix is your dry wet. It's dry and wet. Okay, so we're getting through this. So we've 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 spoken about um, pulse width modulation, low frequency oscillation, which we're using for, for, for modulation. We've we've looked at sequences. Um, we've looked at voltage-controlled oscillators, VCFs. Let's have a little play and see if we can add some percussion uh, to, to this sound. Right, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to... I'm going to add another... I need another sequencer. So let's add another sequencer here. Put it up here. Let's bring this right down here. Let's just pop it here. Right, I'm gonna use my sequencer as a gate, okay? And what I want to do, so remember the top sequencer here is in essence sending out my pitch and my gate. So that's giving me my music. But I want to, let's, let's try and create a kick drum, okay? So I'm gonna need another voltage controlled oscillator. Okay, so there's my voltage control oscillator. And what else am I gonna need? I'm going to need a, um, 
an ADSR. Let's bring in an, AD, an ADSR. Where does it put that? Just here. Okay. Right. So. Dun, 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 dun. Right. So I'm going to take my. Let me just think how I'm going to do this. So I've got that. So I'm going to use a sine wave. And I'm going to go straight from my sine wave into. I'm kind of thinking on the fly here, guys, this might not work. Right. That doesn't sound like a kick drum, but hopefully we can make it sound like a kick drum. Um, let's drop the frequency right down. Let's increase the volume. Right. Let's use the gate as my gate input. Yeah, okay. This is this this is it, right? So then I use my ADSR filter, which you remember, and I'm gonna use that as my control voltage to my kick. Right, you can start to see it starting to come together now. What I need to do now is these buttons here at the bottom, uh, I can click these LEDs. So these are the notes. So, right, but it still doesn't sound like a kick drum, but I can modify my, tighten up my ADSR. Okay. Okay, there we go. Let's try and put a, uh, a snare in. So, oh, one thing that's happening here is these sequences are out of sync. I need to synchronize my sequences. And the way I'm gonna do that is, you see how these lights are flashing? They're basically going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whenever it hits one, when it hits one, it is going to trigger here. So I can send that to reset in the in the percussion. And that will sync up these. After one cycle, it will synchronize these two. Right, let's try and put in um, a snare of sorts. I'm gonna need another sequencer. And I can choose what notes I wanna play. So let's maybe play different ones to the ones that are being played above. And a nice way of simulating a snare is with white noise and We've got this noise module here. I can bring in here, which gives me my white noise. So let's bring the white noise into my mixer. Let's add another ADSR. And let's fire the ADSR using the gate from sequencer three. Still a little snare-ish, but not, I need to tighten this up a bit more. And I need to sync this as well. So press the control key. Let's uh, reset that. Right, now we're in sync. I can tighten this up even a bit more. Okay, so there you have something 
It's not very musical, but it's reasonably musical, demonstrating all these different um, modules, which are, in essence are the the main um, ingredients of, of a modular synthesizer. Okay, so you've got your sequencers, your low frequency oscillators, your voltage controlled oscillators, your, your VCFs. Which I can change the, the uh, um, filter there. And I could change this. And of course you, you, could, you could add automation to these as well. But one thing I might want to do is um, change the clock, change the speed of this. I'm just trying to think how, how I would do that. Um, because there's an external clock here. So theoretically, if I put in a low frequency oscillator and put a square wave into the external clock here, I'm probably going to have to do that on all these guys. There we are, that's all synced up now. So. There we go, so we can change the, the tempo with that. Okay, I've got 10 minutes, so I'm just going to turn this off and stop sharing that. And let me see if I share you, if I, where's my camera? If I move to a different camera, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, someone nod their head, brilliant. Okay, so this is, this is exactly the same as what we've just seen, except it just sounds better because it's analog. Yeah, but in essence, we've got the different processes. Um, here, I've got my voltage controlled oscillator. Right, so I've got my voltage controlled oscillator here. Down here, um, I've got a semi modular system. So this is just like a, a keyboard. And so this, this bit here is a sequencer, which is it's exactly the same as what you've just seen, except it does a few more things. And it's a semi modular because I can patch it here and I can control different things. So for example, I can set the voltage per octave out from here and I can send that into my voltage controlled oscillator, which is here. So this cable here is taking the voltage and then I've got a gate which is coming out and the gate is going into my filter here. It's my filter. And if I change the, for example, the release time, so it takes longer. So it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing. It just sounds better and you've got a bit more control. And if I do, if I hold a note, I can change the, the filter. And I can also have, um, you've, you're actually listening to two oscillators here. So I've got two oscillators running. So that you've, with an analog, you've actually got to tune them all up. Okay. And so if, I, if I've got a sequencer here, so I can put my sequencer through this. Um, just drop the frequency here. And then if I press play, that should theoretically start sending a sequence. And then if I change my frequency, I can start bringing it up. I just nicked that from Stranger Things last night. Which of course is all modular, it's all modular stuff. And I can, I can choose the octave I'm playing as well. Uh, I've got two different oscillators. So it loses its tune there, because analog can lose its tune. And also, and also, needs, to, uh, also needs to warm up. The other thing I can do is I can take a low frequency oscillator that's in sequence with my sequencer and drive up here. I've got uh, some, some, some drum stuff. So, 
So I can trigger my drums with a low frequency oscillator, which is exactly what we were doing before the sequencer. So if I take You might be able to hear a kick in the background there. Now there's, there's a whole plethora of modules to play with. And these here are all simulations of classic modular um, modules. And the great thing is you can, you can without having to buy anything, you can, you can have a good, uh, a good play around with them and um, experiment with them. I love VCV, I love modular, and I love um, Ableton as well. So the, the, the slightly, it's one of the slightly things that are a bit annoying is if I put, let's say, a low frequency oscillator onto a controller, in VCV, you don't see it do anything. It just stays static. And the beauty about Ableton is um, if I put a low frequency oscillator onto a controller to mod do some modulation, it will modulate the controller so you can actually see the dial turning. So it's a lot more intuitive, but VCV is free. And it's, it really is a, a, a fantastic tool. Okay, guys, thanks very much. Take care and um, I'll see you all soon, I hope. Cheers, guys. Bye.